Hi everyone, this is Sharan here. Welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we are going to see about the implementation of sequential pattern mining using Python. And uh, what are all the various metrics associated with it? How do we extract all the patterns out of the data set? And first importantly, like how do we need to format the data set? Like how should we pass on the data as an input to the algorithm? And what kind of outputs that we uh, get? And how to read those output? How to filter those output? how to extract the most important patterns out of the data set. So let's get started and make sure that you watch till the end of this video to, to completely understand the implementation of sequential pattern binding algorithm. So as you see on my screen here, the first most important thing is you need to install uh, the library that is required. So in this case, what I'm going to use is in Python, I'm going to make use of PyCSpade library which is quite useful in order to implement the sequential pattern mining. This is very similar to uh, the C spade that we have in R. So if you have some experience in R, it might be quite similar. There are a few differences uh, here. I will explain it in a bit. So as you see on my screen, like first we need to import the uh, library that is required. So if you do not have Pi C spade, installed what you need to do is you need to first install it and then you need to import the uh, packages and libraries that is required so as you see on my screen here like the three important formulas that are uh, useful or that are used in the sequential pattern mining like very similar to mass market bastard analysis are the support confidence and the lift so this, the formula for conf, like support is like when you have an frequent pattern, like for example, X to Y. So we have the frequency of X, Y that happening in the data set and then we divide by the number of data points. So in case of uh, confidence, what we do is we, we do like a frequency of X, Y and the frequency of the first item. So similarly, lift, you have the formula here. So you can try out and then see how mathematically we are able to identify the support and confidence for uh, for various patterns. And if you are not interested in uh, like in using a particular library or package, you can make use of uh, the formulas and try to come up with uh, your own metrics and extract the various patterns. That is also completely doable. So now next coming on to the uh, the then second part, we need to make use of an data set. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to make use of an inbuilt data set. Uh, so the data set is a Zati. So if I want, like if I can show you the data set here. So here, this is the data set. So what we have here is we have the first column here is the sequence ID. So if you are not familiar with the sequence pattern analysis, what I would suggest is I would suggest go back to the previous video where I have explained the concept in detail. So you will get a better understanding about like how to read the data set. What is sequence ID? When I say sequence ID, what it means, why it is required and you will understand the whole context much better. So now coming to the data set here. So the first column is the sequence ID. So sequence ID is kind of an unit ID. If we have, if you have a customer transactional data set, so this can be related to the customer ID. So for each customer, uh, what's the ID associated with them? The second column is the event ID. Event ID is kind of a timestamp. So for, let's say if you use customer transactional data, so for a customer one, what like uh, on a particular day, like maybe 10th of a particular month. So what happened? The third column here is the number of items that are present in that particular row. So here it means when we say two, it means that there are two items. Like uh, here the items are three and four. So if I need to explain it in a simpler terms, like, like using a customer transactional data set, what I would say is you can read this as customer one on 10th of the month, or on 10th of the current month, bought two items from a shop. The items are three and four. The, the customer one, again, on the 15th of the month, bought three items. The items are one, two, and three. And similarly, if we go on to the customer two, on the 15th, bought three items. The items are one, two, and six. So if you see here, this particular data set is completely integer. So if you have used R in the past, like let's say for uh, any purpose, the uh, sequential pattern analysis in R kind of can accept the verbose data set. So instead of the item, three and four here, what we can do is we can directly pass on the actual name of the product itself. 
So it might be very easy for us to read the data. Whereas in case of Python, you need to do the integer encoding uh, because the algorithm accepts only the integer data. So now this is this is the data set. So if you want to make use of this algorithm for any or any other purpose, you need to make sure that you prepare the data in this particular format so it can be passed on as an input to the algorithm. So now what I'm going to do, do is I'm going to read the data set that I have shown uh, you and I'm going to set the support as 0.4, which is like 40%. And I'm going to pass on the data set and I'm going to show you what are all the various uh, patterns that are present in the data set, how the algorithm is able to identify it. So when I executed this, so here, as you see, so what it says is it says the item one happens like four times. So if I want to explain you here, so as you see, the item one is present for the sequence ID one. So it's present here. So sequence ID two also has an item one. Sequence ID three also has an item one. Similarly, the sequence ID four also has the item one. So it is present in all the four sequence IDs. Like uh, if we take this as customers, it is present in all the customers. Like every single customer is buying this particular item. So here in the screen that you can see, it says like uh, item one, it says four. It happens in all the four sequence IDs. So if I go to item four, it says two. So if you see item four is present in the sequence ID one. When I go to sequence ID 2, 4 is not present here. When I go to sequence ID 3, 4 again is not present here. When I go to the sequence ID 4, we have 4 here. So it happens in two sequence IDs, 1 and 4. So that's how we first identify the various sequential patterns that are present in the data set. And this kind of helps us to understand like how popular a particular sequence is. But we do not yet know like uh, out of the whole data set, like what is the maybe the contribution of this particular pattern. So we do not have that metrics yet. So what we are going to do is we are going to make use of the SPADE algorithm and we are going to make use of the same data set. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the threshold slightly lower here, so 0.3. So maybe I will change it to 0.4 itself and I'm going to see how the results look like. So if you see here on my screen, what happens is it shows like the various uh, uh, items. The sequence is in the second line. So here the item one, it happens four times, like across all the four sequence IDs it happens, and hence the support is four, which means that there are in total, I think the data set there are four sequence IDs and all of them has the item one. So that's why like four divided by four and it becomes one. When we go to item four, what happens is it, ha it happens only in two of the sequence IDs out of four. So two divided by four, we have a support of 50%. So if I take the example four to six, so item four to six, the, the, uh, the support is 50% and the confidence is uh, one. So here, if I need to explain like what happens. So, so here what happens is we are looking for four to one. So what we are looking for is we are looking for this particular pattern four. So customer buying an item four, and then after some time, he buys the item six. So if I go to the sequence ID one, so we have four here, and we have six here. So customer buys an item four, and after a few days, he buys the item six. So four to six, it happens once. So it happens once. So if I go to the sequence ID two, I have an six, but I do not have any four. So if I go to the sequence ID three, I have again a six, but I do not have any four. So if I go to the sequence ID four here, so I don't clearly see four and six happening. So this is the second one. So how to identify the support for this particular pattern, like four to six, what is the support? So we have two times occurring in this particular data set. So two divided by, there are four sequence in total, like one, two, three, and four. So two divided by four, is equal to 50%. So how do I calculate the confidence? So as you see on this particular screen here, frequency of X, Y, and by frequency of X. So here in this case, four and six happens twice in the whole data set. If I go to item four here, so it happens in sequence ID one, 
it doesn't turn up in sequence 2 it doesn't turn up in sequence 3 and again it turns up in sequence 4 so 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1 so we have a confidence of 1 for this particular pattern so that's how uh, that the that, that's the mathematics behind the calculation of support confidence in case of lift we need to make use of support of uh, support of x and y by support of x and support of y so by that way you will you will be able to uh, calculate the lift for this particular pattern so what happens is here in, as you see on my screen we have set the threshold for support as 0.4 so all the patterns that has met this particular threshold will come up on the screen so if i want to reduce the threshold let's say i want it to go to maybe 0.2 and i'm going to rerun it so if you see here there are much more patterns that are coming up now because we have reduced the support and hence like more items are coming up so that's how you identify the various patterns that are present so as you see in this particular screen one of the issue here is that there is a possibility for us to get a lot of patterns out of the data set especially when the data set is huge there is a possibility that we have a large number of patterns being scattered and we can't really set a very high threshold when we have a large diverse data set so we need to reduce and we need to compromise on a right threshold for the support in order to come up with the in order to capture the most of the patterns that are present so when we have a large pattern the disadvantage is we won't be able to exactly focus on the right area there will be a lot of noise there will be a lot of redundant patterns so when we have a pattern such as let's say uh, one two and six there will be a lot of duplicates like one six uh, two and six one and two there are so many different combinations that happens within within the late like, the larger sequence so that's uh, or that's all are the some of the disadvantages in the sequential pattern mining like uh, but if we can set a really uh, ideal threshold or uh, a higher threshold you will be able to at least get the most popular sequence that are present in the data set we might not be able to get a large sequence that is make maybe a little more critical but definitely we will be able to identify those uh, short sequences that are uh, repeating again and again and again in many scenarios so this will be very useful in uh, in understanding the customer behavior data set for example let's say there is a customer who comes to your uh, maybe e-commerce website and uh, buys a uh, mobile phone today so we would exactly know what would be his next purchase in the next few days so we might know maybe in the next few days he might come up and maybe buy a few more a uh, uh, few more gadgets that might uh, support his particular mobile phone so it's very useful for us to identify the sequence behind the uh, customer's behavior we can also make use of this in various other scenarios like if you uh, see my previous video i have explained about the various applications where the sequential pattern mining can be made can be used effectively so now coming on to the next one like to this particular data set like instead of the format mentioned above it can be passed on like uh, this as well like what happens is here we have the sequence id 1 and we have the timestamp which is the event id and we just pass on all the items that happens on this on this particular timestamp in an array so so you can pass on the data like this as well so if in case you have a different data set all you need to do is you need to first come up with the various sequence ids or the customer id you you, you need to definitely have a timestamp, and you need to understand what are all the various items that can happen and if you are going to use python you need to do integer encoding convert those uh, uh, those uh, items into an integer and you will be good to make use of the by C squared algorithm or by C squared like package in Python and it's got various patterns out of it. So that's about the implementation of the frequent pattern mining. And if you are interested in learning more about the implementation, understand the the various steps and understand the metrics much more better. So I am attaching and reference here. So I'll be attaching the link to these uh, references in the description as well and all the scripts that i'm making use of in order to implement are available in my git repository so you can go to my Git repository you will, you will be able to find the code i have used for the learning data science journey and you can just uh, replicate and then make use of it for your learning purpose as well so that's about it for today and i will see you soon with another topic and uh, 
bye until then